Hello again everyone, this is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and today in this video what we're going to be talking about is a few ways that you can go about building templates and also a few tips that you can use for reducing the amount of RAM that you use using contact. Alright, so first off we're going to talk about templates and why I think templates are so important is because it's such a huge time saver and if you're a working composer, musician, or anybody, time is of the essence so you want to be able to work quick and work fast so templates are a great way of doing that. So a few reasons why templates are important is that one, you save time by loading and naming tracks and not having to do that every time you load a new project. And if you have an existing template that you've already built and you want to add to it because you just got a new library, you simply just open up that template, add those tracks, name them, save it as a new template, and you're ready to go. Alright, so first off, there's a couple different methods that you can use when building large templates using contact. Is The first one is you have one instance of contact with one individual patch loaded inside, and then you just repeat that multiple times. Or you can have one instance of contact and then load multiple patches inside, and then using MIDI tracks that are connected to that to do all of your programming and MIDI writing. Now each method will do the job, but it's up to you to do the research and see which method works best for your DAW. Alright, so getting into method 1, utilizing a single instance of contact with a single patch loaded. Even though using an empty single instance of contact does utilize RAM and can build up over time, later on in the video we'll talk about some ways that you can sort of trim down contact's RAM footprint so it's not hitting your computer so hard. But also doing it this way is you're sort of dividing the workload on your computer to make things run a little bit more efficiently. And for all these examples, we're going to be using Cubase Pro 8.5. So first thing you'll want to do is open up a new instrument track and then load contact. Then load in one single patch from any one of your libraries. After that, just go ahead and repeat this process multiple times for however many instruments you want in your template. Now, one of the great things about Cubase in doing this method is that you can actually disable tracks. So you can have a thousand instruments loaded in your template, but they could all be bypassed. So when you load up your new template, it loads instantly. So you don't have to wait because there's no instruments loaded into RAM. So by doing it this way, you have the ability to create some really big templates and using the disable enable feature allows you to have more control over which instruments you decide to use. All right, so getting into method two, utilizing a single instance of contact with multiple patches loaded and in contact, you can use up to 16 patches total per instance. Now, of course, by doing this method, you're gonna use less amounts of RAM by having less instances of contact. But one of the great things of doing it this way is if you're going to do any sort of purging or purging samples, which we're going to talk about later, this is a really easy way of just kind of doing it all at the same time, instead of having to go through each individual track and purging samples. So in doing this method and using the enable and disable track feature, it can be a little bit tricky because sometimes when you disable an instance that has MIDI tracks connected to it and then you enable it, the MIDI tracks might not know where to go, so you might have to reconnect it. So that's definitely something to keep in mind when you're deciding how you want to go about building your templates. All right, so now I wanna talk about one of the great features of Contact when it comes to reducing the amount of RAM that you use in your sessions. Now the feature we're gonna be talking about is the purge feature, and it's a great way to have more control over the samples that you use, so you're not using more samples than you need when it comes to the individual parts that you're writing. Now when it comes to purging samples, the first method I wanna talk about is update sample pool. And by doing this, you're removing all the unused samples from RAM, leaving only what you use. And this is a great way to save on RAM. So you can go ahead and record in a part, update the sample pool, and the only samples that you use are the ones that you played in. So it's a really great way of not having more samples loaded into RAM than you need. Another thing you can do is go to the Options tab and find Database. There, uncheck Automatically Load and Saved Files and remove all the libraries that you don't need in there. And this can help lean down Contact's RAM footprint. The last thing we're going to talk about in this video is the Contact Memory Server, and you can find this by going to Options and then finding the Memory tab. And I normally have this set to manual mode as I like to be able to have the option of purging samples manually. And some of the benefits of having the contact memory server enabled is that you can increase load time by having all your samples already loaded into the contact memory server. So if you close a project and open it back up, all your samples will load instantly. And if you look up at the very top, you'll see the icon that allows you to manually purge all samples. And this is a really easy way of purging samples of libraries that you're not currently using as it can build up over time if let's say you're experimenting through other libraries trying to find sounds. Which is definitely a more time efficient way of purging samples quickly and easily. So we hope you find some of these tips useful in allowing you to optimize your workflow and get a little bit more out of contact. So that about wraps up this video. If you have any other questions, please let us know. And I want to thank you for watching and we will see you next time.